just outside of Galway at Morin's uh, um, on the Weir. And I'm with Michael Morin and you're multi-generation. This is your family's oyster cottage. That's right, Nathan. It's, um, it goes back a bit. It goes back uh, 300 years and seven generations. So um, we're inspired by, you know, the previous generations gone before. And uh, we, we bring through their ideas and their, their care and the hospitality. You know, it's, um, it's where we always have to look back to go forward. Well, let's start from the re beginning. What is, what's the definition of a weir? So the weir, um, the weir itself is relates to the stone wall, um, what we have here at the top of um, of the little village here that was used to catch salmon. Uh, oh really? Yeah, yeah, oh. a long time ago. So it's it's fallen into disrepair. These yeah. were old, you know, a long time ago. This river would have been it's back again now, yeah. wild salmon. But of course, everything is very regulated, which is the right way to have yeah. it now, you know. But a long time ago, there was this this stone wall would have would have caught a lot of salmon. Yeah. So so an oyster cottage. So they would do their oyster farming there, and then would they, this be the storehouse? The storehouse, yeah, absolutely. And um, the storehouse was actually a shed. Uh, I'll show you an old picture upstairs. It was a shed just where this garden is here. Yeah. And um, the beds are just and the next kilometer. There's just cliffs, oyster beds and the Atlantic Ocean and then Canada and all that so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're close to home here you know <laughs> so what we're sitting in is a private dining room and it used to be your grandfather's bedroom this was their bedroom you know and um and his mother is was in the room next door you know so um oh wow uh, I think you know just hearing stories recently um, from different people from that would have been here um my grandmother was the powerhouse for food yeah. here you know she baked tens of thousands of loaves of bread with her hands brown bread you know what you see right here on the table yeah and um but she would have learned from my grandfather's mother you know yeah. and uh, she was a very strict um, lady but um yeah it was uh, it was interesting well, how, how little little, yeah, that's little what... ideas and little kind of bits of uh, you know nobody was a chef back then you yeah. know but it was just you learn as you went it was very simple and yeah. Well, tell, tell me about the building up uh, the roof upstairs because it's that because I that's quite a traditional um, roof on, on the um, cottage here is that not right yeah it's this this front building looks almost exactly as it did um, wow. you know going back um, you can see the old dresser out there and um, we still call that area the kitchen you know where you walked into the door because um, it was a house and a bar and where that range was was the kitchen um, you know it was, it kind of developed organically and very slowly from the 1960s. It was a very simple menu. The oysters just from our own beds out there, smoked salmon, brown bread, and yeah. even the brown bread was buttered before okay. it went out on the table, yeah. you know, yeah. it was that kind of care. And, um, you know, it, my father, um, Willie, you know, he developed it. Um, he was in here when he was 15. See how the story went, Nathan, it was, Michael Morn, Thomas Morn, Michael Morn, Thomas Morn, Michael Morn, oh, down through the generations, you know, yeah. so my father's older brother was Thomas, Okay. so he passed away when he was very young, and uh, my father had to go in here very young, you know, he was 15 when he went in here, and uh, one side of his body was bigger than the other side of his body, oh. purely from opening oysters. Really? Yes, you know, from... Well, we're getting back to oysters, you are a international world shucking uh, winner, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, now, uh, so let's see you shuck an oyster now. Tell me about the different implements that you have yeah, here. Yeah, so I've just, I just picked um, a few knives out of the collection here. They're um, uh, with the G-Gas oysters, which are farmed in the same beds that we get this, the famous natives. I use a, a knife like this. It's a, it's a very French style of opening, you know, and uh, my father, uh, where he would open right to the front of the oyster here, I tend to go in the side, you know, it's just right in where the adductor muscle is here, so it's just very, very gently, you know, just a little bit, and you don't need much of the knife in there, just just that much. Oh, okay. Just that okay. much, you know. So what you're doing then is you're just running it, just drawing circles on the roof, like that. And it just ah, opens. so you don't destroy any of the yeah. meat. The meat is intact. And when you're judging oysters, it has to be intact, it has to be clean from the shell, yes. yep. no broken bits of shell. Exactly, exactly. And yes. actually one time I was judging and the platter came in and going, I think there's blood in there. Oh, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. oh my god, yeah. It's, um, you know, that's the thing about, you know, when you have oysters like this that are really, really special, you know, and we spoke about other competitions around the yes, world and even yes. looking at Whistler where you have the Larada or the Olympia, you know, and uh, an oyster like that that takes seven years to grow, that's it right. needs to be 
when it gets on the plate, you know, our native takes six years to grow. When that oyster gets on the plate, it needs to be at its absolute best. Cause so it's these are about six years old? These ones here are three. Oh, um, three, but the, okay. But the natives would, would take six years to grow to around their size. Yeah, and this yeah. is a Pacific this stock is a Pacific, here. Yeah, okay. exactly. We're, we're almost... They're almost small, deep cup. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. But they, they, where we're situated here, you know, we have um, the burn to the south, just right right down here. We're mm -hmm. very, very close. You know, okay. Limestone region, glacial. To the north, we have Connemara. And um, so, and you have the fresh water, of course, coming in. Okay. These beds out here, they have the perfect mix of that salt and fresh water. So oh. almost brackish. Then you have the, yeah. the clean, yeah, the clean fresh water and the salt water. So you need that brininess to give the flavor as well. That gives the brininess. It gives the minerality. Yeah. You know, possibly in this limestone region that we have here. You know, beautiful minerality, and this all develops the meroir, as they say, yeah. of the yeah. of the region. You know, yeah. and. Um, but it's it's lovely, you know, and I, I get so excited. Like yeah. we're we're almost in September, and we're waiting for we're waiting for the native to come back as well. Oh, really? You know, really? it's um, but the taste you'll get from these is is a lot. You yes. know, they're, they're from the same beds, so they over the few years they develop a, that beautiful, beautiful, you know, uh, beautiful taste. With the native, then it's even more complex. You get this metallic finish. We're, we're, we're from obviously Vancouver, so we have Pacific stock too. But what a lot of people don't realize. It's where the terroir, where they're growing in, what they're eating, that creates the flavor. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's um, and and the thing about it is um, they're just yeah. They're, I I love them. I yeah. absolutely yeah. love them. You know, and uh, th these oysters here as well. Um, I, I had eighteen Michelin chefs in once for lunch. You know, and I, it was the middle of summer. Oh and wow. I didn't have the native. You know. Yeah. And they left, they were going out the door saying these were the best oysters they tasted <laughs> in their lives, you know. And I was worried, you know, because yeah. the, na the native to me is everything. It's my, if I had one meal before I die, it would be a dozen of that native and a nice glass of Chablis well, yeah, this, or something this, this like is, that. This is from your, you know, this is from your, you know, your childhood and you're born and raised here. So you're used to this flavor. What do you think of the um, oysters from the Pacific Coast, from Vancouver? I can see what you mean. Actually, it is a very you know when Patrick yeah. McMurray in Toronto when he when he um, he does his graph of how you know different oysters around the world and, and he plots them all. He struggles to plot our oysters on any graph. You know, yeah. he, you know he'll, he'll he'll tell you straight out. You know, Patrick's favorite seat is actually the window seat out there. Oh, okay, but okay. he he um, Patrick just says you know it's so complex. Okay, Michael, you have these two other knives, so what are these ones? Yeah, this is a Swedish design, um, up in a forest in the north of Sweden. Um, and it's double-ended? It's double-ended. Okay. They, uh, they decided, you know, in severing the adductor muscle, it was almost uh, an unnatural movement. Mm -hmm. So, um, these oysters, now, it, it would be something like that. It would be right in on the hinge, where, okay. where, where the oyster would be opened, just like this. So, the knife, of course, our oyster, the native, is a very flat oyster. But the other side of the knife then just oh, so it like that. So it's all from the muscle. one movement, and it just okay. it's a little turn like that. Oh, and, okay. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a, it's a very clean way of opening oysters. I again. can tell you're a pro when you can check it right from your hand. Oh, I, I <laughs> need the towel, and I've seen some of the competitors that have little made little wooden blocks that they can just hold. Yeah. It have you seen those? Yeah, two? in yeah. Um, actually in. Um, Little um, little deer in in Canada. They have a beautiful one with the. It was it's done in maple. Yes. Yeah. And uh, but I I've seen some other. I've seen hockey pucks used. Uh, you oh. know, and I've seen other <laughs> things used over in Canada. But it's uh, it's lovely. I I, I love the idea because I think it's about the theatre. Yes. You know. Yes. Um, that that's very important. The last knife here. This knife <laughs> doesn't look as fancy as these, but this one has won everything for me. This one, seven Irish championships. Five European Championships and two World Championships. Wow, and it's, uh, that's incredible! <laughs> I'm just wondering how long more it's going to. <laughs> yeah. It's got a fairly wide um, blade as well. It has a wide blade, and yes. again, that's for the pushing with the fingers, you know. So, 
it just lets you into the into the hinge like that. Yes. And then what I what I do, I don't use the double sided. It's a bit complex for Ireland, you yes, know. <laughs> yes, yes. I just flick the knife over like that. And oh, sever, and that's sever, very clever. And sever the adductor that way. Yes. So it's. Uh, <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Perfect. So we're gonna yeah, try let's, some uh, of these oysters. Try some of these guys. I like it just plain. Yeah, I, because I, 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 I want to taste the brininess I agree and the natural Nathan. flavor. I agree with you. And the, I, I love you know the idea just of chewing the oyster and getting it around the tongue, mm. like a wine. And they're nice and firm as well. There's, they're nice. They're, they're, there's a lovely creaminess and sweetness to them at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, again, you can see outside the weather here today is. Uh, <laughs> You know, I'm having um, a Galway hooker, and yeah, it's not what you think. <laughs> <laughs> it's the name of a famous boat that uh, we just saw it this morning. We were at the City Museum. Oh, lovely, lovely. So tell me about the beer here. Yeah, the um, Galway hooker, um, Aidan and Ron, Aidan Murphy and Ron and Brennan, um, they're local. So they're, um, I was actually down to their uh, distillery in... Um, yeah, last week actually. Yeah. So yeah, we could have popped down there today, but again, these guys, they were when they were in university, they were experimenting, they were they had such great ideas. And when they left, they um they were all ready and they got a great name, of course, Goey Hooker, you know, and you have here people coming in and have two pints of Guinness and three three hookers. Yeah, you know, and yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. you know, and this is what you hear, you know. A lovely hoppy um Happy taste of it. It's just, and they they do an IPA, and they do. I think they have a stout coming on stream as well. So there. Well, we have the famous Guinness here. Now, I notice the Guinness here. It's not as effervescent. It it's quite flat. It's uh, we we love it. Um, we actually <laughs> a lot of the we people cannot wait to have Guinness when they get to Ireland, and uh, you go down. It goes down to them. There's a lot of Guinness being sold here. Number one, and mm -hmm. you, you we're. Saying you have St James's Gate in Dublin, yeah. there's a there's a creaminess to it, you know. Yes, um, it is creamy. I know why they match it with the oysters. It's because of the minerality, you yes. know. Um, but uh, you know, I, I also think a nice un oak chardonnay goes very well, or yeah, sure, or, yeah, or, 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 or champagne, or sauvignon blanc, or, or champagne. exactly, exactly. So it's um, but it's nice, and uh, I know you use horseradish a lot, so Tabasco and everything. But that kills the natural flavor of natural an oyster. Flavor. It kills the natural yeah. flavor, you know. Yeah. And we, we we grill these as well, and I could bring out I bring out some of those there now, and um, just with a little bit of garlic breadcrumbs, yeah. hint of herno. Mm -hmm. um, trying not to disguise the flavor, just to bring it somewhere else, you know. Yeah. It's it's you have to be so careful. You have to be so okay. careful, you know. <laughs> well, thank you. No, cheers. So, Michael, what do we have here? Um, so starting oh, here with yeah. the the grilled oysters, um, garlic grilled oysters. So they're uh, you got your breadcrumbs, garlic breadcrumbs. Um, there's butter in there. There's you know a little hint of pasties uh, onto the seafood special. This is our one of our main dishes. This showcases the place. Um, it's been here for a long, long time. You can see the the Mary Rose sauce there on the on the prawns, the crab, and the claws. And these are dishes. These these ingredients are just our core. Everything done very, very simply. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that goes for all the, the food, really, you know. Um, you want to showcase the natural flavors of the seafood. Exactly. And you don't have to do much. You just That's need right. to, you know, care about it and get it in fresh and out. And, and the, say the steam mussels here, again, cooked in white wine. Yes. Bay leaf, little hint of garlic butter. And we have the garlic claws over here. So the, and the soft shell uh, crab here. So, um, again, from, from the west of Ireland, you know, we. Um, different areas depending on where we can get it you know again it's the same with the lobsters the lobsters are only just down the road in uh, in uh, Newquay <laughs> so uh, <laughs> there's times where the fishermen are good they're, they're coming in our kitchen is just delivery after delivery yeah so these these crabs I've never seen the black uh, tip claw oh right yeah 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 they're um again we we, we just see these as normal you know okay. they're 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 um they're beautiful and the just the garlic butter and again this goes back to Irish dairy yes you know it just gives that lovely, lovely flavor, and uh, just makes it, they're succulent. You know, I'm gonna you're gonna have to dig and, in here and, soon. And, and low fat. And low fat. <laughs> you know, I can't guarantee that now.
Okay, when in Ireland it's uh, Irish coffee time, right, Michael? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> you're gonna show me the authentic Irish coffee. Yeah, perfect. Um, we've been making them here for a long, long time, and I, I suppose the the home of Irish coffee finds is only it's down the road a bit. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, close to Shannon Airport. So okay. It was, um, it was a back, going back to a time where people came in in the morning, and there was a famous chef, and he they said. Uh, We'll have coffee, but do something Irish with it. You know, I think that was the that was the command that was given back then, and uh, this emerged. This wonderful coffee emerged from all that. So it was uh, for a morning coffee. That's for, not bad. <laughs> for a morning coffee, <laughs> a little wee drown before. <laughs> and I think it was very early in the morning. I, I uh, the way how the story goes. So um, the most important thing, a good hot glass, and these are this is um, I suppose the glass here is very thick. So if not, to have a teaspoon or something in it that would just conduct the. So you've had boiling water just to heat the glass. Just to heat the glass, so we're piping hot here. Yes. And um, so, so, of course, now the most interesting thing and the most controversial thing we're going to start off with is the coffee. Okay. What I'm using here is instant coffee, but it's a very, very finely ground, mild blend instant coffee. This works very, very well with Irish coffee. So. And because it's a nice mild blend, you can pop in an extra little bit, you know, so. Wow. So just what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that in there and get that started off now. So again, with the So you added a couple of tablespoons and it's pretty thick and intense. It's pretty thick and intense, exactly. Yeah. Now, the sugar. Yeah. White sugar just works better with this. It just, over years of making them, Oh, for some okay. reason, I don't know why, <laughs> but it's uh, some of the best kind of, um, and you can give it to. Um, okay. I'm not using Jemison here now. I'm using my favorite. I love Powers. Okay. Uh, Powers whiskey. Powers and ice is a lovely little drink. But <laughs> any, any Irish. Any uh, Irish. Uh, sorry, whiskey. And it's not as smoky as the Scottish whiskey. Yeah, is. and like, you know, the Jemison has that sweetness of it. Yeah. Um, of course, you have your high end Irish whiskeys. You're not going to use those in an yeah. Irish coffee. No, of course uh, not. You know your your Middletons or your green spots or your so, yellow spots. So this is just a blend. This yeah. is a blend, but it's a it's a it's a lovely one. I I, I love it when with a few cubes of ice and when it dissolves a little bit. It's just it's a nice it's okay. a nice little drink. And um, with Jemison, you'd use a little less sugar then okay. because it's it's naturally more sweeter. So okay. um, in that goes. And um, stir it up to mix now, it all in. The secret for people making these at home is to stir for a long, long time. Oh, so you yeah. want to evaporate, get, I mean, to get this, to get this well. sugar, to get this sugar dissolved, yes. you know, yes. um, it's, um, you'll feel crazy after about 30 seconds doing it. And, uh, but this, this is uh, what makes it in the end. And I'll show you why. Um, so I'm gonna keep on going with this just for a couple more seconds. But you want to blend everything because you don't want any bits of sugar left, you don't want any bits of coffee left, you want to well blend it. Exactly. I, I, my grandmother, you know, when she was putting in the sugar and she'd be saying it to someone, she says, a bird never flew on one wing, therefore you need two spoons of sugar, you know. <laughs> so uh, that was her, her old saying, you know. Now, the thing is, because I've stirred this so much, you know, you see people pouring um, over a heated teaspoon and you see all these little yeah, tricks to yeah. try and stop the, the cream sinking. Yeah. When you've stirred like this and you've dissolved the sugar right through, you can just let the cream flow right through like this. So. And this is really important too because the cream, it's really high fat content and the Irish are so renowned for their dairy product. And look at it, it doesn't seep right through. So it's gonna look like a pint of Guinness when you get this. Uh, <laughs> and we eat with our eyes first, so I just think, um, wow, there we go. And uh, so uh, that should just stay that color and uh, it, it looks nice, I just think it's. Uh, <laughs> and so do you, do you drink it properly, you don't mix it through. You, no, you, 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 you take the, the cream. coffee through the cream, exactly. Okay. So it just, just like a Guinness. It just like a Guinness yeah. and it just mellows out everything. And this is, you know, sometimes with Guinness people say there's eating and drinking in Guinness. Yeah. This is like your dessert and your coffee and and something else in this Irish cultural experience all in one, you know, so you're you get everything right here. So, so that's uh, a true Irish coffee. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So um Yeah, it's really good because you have that sweetness on the top 
and then the, the car it just comes right through it. That's just, right. Yeah, exactly. So it's um, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>